Hello friends and welcome back to our little corner of the internet. In this video, we're going to make the spellbook from Hocus Pocus. My name is Katora and let's get this party started. For everyone playing along at home, here is the material list of everything I used on this project and it's a doozy this time around. For this project, I'm going to start off with making the hardware first. I'm using monster clay to sculpt the master, and then I'm going to mold and later cast them in resin. With this project and every other project we've done on this channel, we do not strive for screen accuracy. We aim for more of an artistic interpretation. When using monster clay, to keep it nice and pliable, I have a little baby crock pot I keep off to the side. I love working with monster clay. It is one of my favorite mediums to work with, but there are a lot of costs associated with monster clay. Otherwise, I would use it a lot more. Making the molds and then casting the resin is expensive. That's why you don't see a lot of this type of work on our channel. For the hardware, texture is the name of the game. To accomplish that, I tried to use a wide variety of tools. Some regular sculpting tools and some not so regular sculpting tools. The handle of one of the sculpting tools had a very interesting pattern on it and I thought it would be perfect to make the scales for the snakes. Instead of sculpting a, a thousand tiny little scales. Off camera, Pat very kindly made the molds for me. If you are interested in learning about how to make molds and resin casting, I will leave links to resources in the description below. Now that we're done casting everything, let's put some paint on the hardware. I started everything off with a couple coats of black acrylic paint. For the next layer, I dry brushed on black metallic paint. Then I dry brushed on some bright silver paint. Now that I'm satisfied with the metallic look on the hardware, I'm going to weather it. To start the weathering process, I'm going to use my water mixable oil colors. I'm going to start with a yellow ochre. After that layer is down, I'm going to work my way darker with raw umber, burnt umber, and a lamp black. In between adding layers of oil paint, I will be wiping off the excess with a slightly damp rag. Sometimes when I'm weathering, I like to start with the lightest shade first and then work my way to the darker shades. I feel it adds more depth with the final piece.
the framework of the book, I found an old encyclopedia at the thrift store. The one drawback about the encyclopedia, it's a little skinnier than I would have liked for the book. I won't be able to do a full finger on the spine of the book, but I'll be able to make a knuckle. To make the book look like it is bound in human skin, I thought EVA foam clay would be the perfect fit. When it dries, it's not rigid, it's a little pliable, so it kind of gives you that texture of really old and wrinkly dried flesh. For the fingers, I rolled them out into little sausage shapes, and then I added a press-on nail for the fingernail, and then I used a skewer for the bone. You can see I've already drawn on the book a road map of where I want to put the pieces of flesh. That way it will help me keep the work proportionate. When binding the flesh to the book, I'm going to work in smaller sections to prevent them from sticking together. After letting the EVA foam clay sit for 10, maybe 15 minutes, I'm going back over it with a stiff bristle brush. Are you enjoying this video? Can you do me a small favor and hit that like button, possibly the subscribe button? With your support, it will help make our channel grow. Our goal is to get to a thousand followers by the end of the year. And if you're already subscribed, thank you so much for your continuing support. I've given the EVA foam clay a few days to set up, but now it's time to start the painting process. And the first stop is going to be using a flexible primer. Just like on the hardware for the book, I'm gonna start with working light to dark. I'm starting this off with using a white acrylic paint and mixing in a little bit of yellow ochre for the underpainting layer. I'm not trying to paint one thick coat I'm going to let some of the uh, black EVA foam clay poke through and hopefully that'll give a little bit of extra dimension later on when we go into the darker colors. After the underpainting is dry, I'm going to go over it with a light coat of yellow ochre. For the base coat layer, I'm going to paint it with a light flesh color and then I'm going to paint the scar areas with a vermilion red. When the first few layers are dry, I'm going to go over everything with a coat of burnt sienna. I'm not watering down the paint at this point, but I am using a pretty damp rag damp to wipe off the excess to reveal the bottom layers.
for the final layer, I'm going to use some heavy bodied raw umber. For the stitching, I'm going to use waxed cotton cord, which can be found at your local hobby store in their leatherworking section. I was hoping I was going to be able to stitch it into the book, but the EVA foam was not flexible enough, so I ended up cutting out the stitches individually and then super gluing them down. This by far was the most tedious part of this project. It took me, no joke, about eight hours to stitch everything together. I have been on a major spellbook making kick over the last year. So my question to you, is there any spellbook you'd like to see me make? Let me know in the comment section below. We're on the home stretch now. We just need to add some gemstones in the eyes of the snakes and the clasp, and then a few other details and we are done. One of the final details is to give the eyeball some eyelashes. I found these eyelashes at the $1.25 store. Maybe she's born with it. Maybe it's the dollar twenty-five store. In efforts to make the eyeball look less like a stone and more like an eye, I'm going to add some details by brushing the eyeball with some chalk pastels and then going over everything with a high gloss varnish. Some final weathering for the stitches and then we're on to the glamour shots as always a big old thank you for everybody that watched this video and i will see you next time mm -hmm.